If you do not know the name Pepper J, you are on out of the loop in the behind the scenes world of Hollywood. Pepper J is the founder of Pepper J Productions, a company that produces music, film, TV, internet shows, and live entertainment. Most notably are the Hollywood Insider Programs, Actors Report, Actors Entertainment, and Actors Radio. As part of the Actors Podcast Network, which is only a small part of Pepper J Productions. Aside from what her company does, Pepper J can be found on both sides of the camera herself and personally produces live entertainment, media content, directs films, documentaries, and music videos, all while still being coaching performance skills to actors, speakers, and singers. To send this message home, so to speak, Pepper J has just recently released her book, Dynamic Song Performance, The Singer's Bible, and I am honored and privileged to have her on my show today to discuss with her about her book. How are you doing? I'm fine, Jimmy. Nice to speak with you. And so you just put this book out, and um, Doug was nice enough to send me uh, the advance of it so I can have a little reference material to it. Um, at first, I was a little apprehensive about um, uh, kind of the book, um, just off of the title, Dynamic. Um, uh, sorry, I lost my thought. Dynamic, <laughs> Dynamic, Dynamic song, song performance. performance. The, the, the singer's time. Bible. So I just assumed it was kind of for like, you know, those people that would go on to say like uh, The Voice or American Idol or something like that and who are like just, you know, trying to uh, or more professional singers. Uh, but the more I read into the book, um, it actually focuses a lot on uh, mainly the audience psychology of, uh, side of it. And it kind of applies to everybody who actually gets up in front of people and does any kind of public speaking, right? That's exactly true. I think it's helpful to the beginner, the karaoke singer, or someone that wants to make their living entertaining. So how did you get your start in, in the industry as a whole? Well, I was a child, and my family was involved in entertainment, and I just naturally was included in theater plays, TV shows, live entertainment. They just packed me up like a suitcase and took me. <laughs> <laughs> and so you kind of had your that, – that's your gut, how you got your start in it. Um, how did you build from going from there to building kind of this whole conglomerate that you have going on with uh, all the stuff that you're involved in? Well, I, when I finished college, I became a school teacher. So I taught in public schools for a little more than a decade, performance skills mostly and, and other subjects. And then when I left public school teaching uh, to go to some higher education, uh, that's when I continued my private coaching. And I've been doing that since 1973. Uh, quit teaching in 83, I think, and John Michael Ferrari joined me as my teaching partner in, I think, 1991. And since then, have things just kind of expanded to uh, being uh, the Pepper J Productions and you're getting involved with doing the film side of it and uh, everything. And uh, how did those actors' um, workshops, basically, that are you have for a podcast, how'd that come about? Well, in the early 90s, I created the uh, actors, the working actors group, working actors group. We did that for more than a decade where uh, very successful union actors would come in and we would work things out and do different things. Uh, when I became a little busier uh, and I was, had my own acting jobs to attend, then we stopped doing that, but we just continued private coaching on an individual basis and and it's worked out it's such a lovely thing to do share make thing make make people do things better it's fun absolutely um well i got a lot of questions for you cuz i i for one i'm a musician first and foremost i dabbled in a l number of different things acting was one of them um but i've never it never kind of stuck with me um and i've also dabbled a little bit in writing and every and just about anything on the, and that, uh, that I can try and focus my creative energies into because it just, without doing something, I felt like I was going nuts. So, but music kind of is what stuck the most because it felt like more of an outlet to it. Um, but singing has always been kind of my um, weak spot. So, so, I mean, I can write the lyrics up and everything, and I, and I, I, I'm, 
can write a well-written song and with you know with a nice hook and all of that stuff but it's always been the vocal aspects that have always kind of haunted me as far as that and even uh and when you how is it that you go about taking on a client is there something that you look for in particular or, or you know just kind of citing me as an example because i feel like my voice is very monotone and very nasally I'm not a singing coach. I am a performance coach. When someone comes to me and they need serious coaching on their voice, there are numerous excellent singing teachers across the country and, and abroad that I have and do recommend people to go to depending on their seriousness of uh, in, an interest in the profession. If they ha need minor things that I can quickly get to uh, as far as their singing performance and making their voice better, uh, making it sound better, then of course uh, John and I would do so. But if, you, if someone was really bad at singing, <laughs> then, um, then they, they, they shouldn't waste their time, energy, and money with me because I'm teaching performance skills. So it, they, that presupposes someone has a nice voice. You know, or not necessarily a nice voice, but a commercial voice, because you can have a Johnny Cash voice, or uh, you know, there's a lot of different voices out there that aren't what you would consider pretty, that are very commercial. Like Bob Dylan, for example, or uh... exactly. Okay. Um. So you focus mainly on the performance aspect. Um. How that does is so uh, as uh, as far as that goes, when a singer or anybody who's going up on stage, is it so you give them pointers and show them how to interact with the audience? Exactly. I never know what I am going to share with a client until I have that client in front of me. I need to know two things. I need to know where the client is now as far as talent and ability, and I need to understand what their goal is, where they want to go. If I know that I can, with the tricks of the trade that I have for, you know, different performance skills, I know I can take them either to their goal or much further along toward their goal, then I would take them on as a client. Uh, if not, then I refer them out. Okay. And how does that work with um, Pepper J Productions as far as with the, uh, um, you're doing your performance training to do you solicit those people if they if they have the raw talent and they're just kind of you're kind of bringing them a lot up to speed with everything else? Um, is it something that you're looking for with your film production and music production aspects of it? The production company Pepper J Productions is quite different. It's separate. We make things. We get hired to make things. We get hired to make music videos, independent films, documentaries, infomercials. Uh, industrials, <laughs> it's just um, reality shows. I, I'm just trying to think of just the clients we have right at the moment. So we make things. Now, it is true that on numerous occasions, a student of ours will ask us, hire us to make something around them, whether it be a music video or if it's uh, you know a sh film short where they want to show their wares if they're an acting student of ours. Um, you know, if it's a public uh, speaking person that's, you know, seeking our advice, we might tape, you know, some sort of audition for them. So we get hired to do those type of things, but the production company is really quite separate. If you want to take a look at some of the music videos that we have out in the world, gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, well, there's one that's called Don't Fall Between the Daylight. And that's with uh, Caitlin Haynes, K-A-T-E-L-Y-N, Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. She was about 13 when she sang that, and we shot that for her. And and speaking of Katie, the, the other one is called Mona Lisa, <laughs> Mona Lisa Smile uh, with Caitlin Haynes. So there's two. And uh, sometimes the there's a video out there with John Michael Ferrari's song, Run which is a music video that I made for him. And so there are different things out there that um, we just make things. 
And so the two intertwine, the teaching and the making of something, uh, when someone hires us to do that. Okay, would you classify the book, though, the dynamic song performance, the songwriter's Bible, as a kind of a DIY performance book for singers? I think it's a how-to book. Okay. You know, I tried to put in, I have over 40 years experience in teaching, and I tried to think of all my students and everything that I've had to teach them uh, that was successful, and then I organized it. And I really took me about 14 years to organize all my notes because I kept adding to it and different things. And that's what that is. I'd say they're just one performance skill after another, usually something that the reader would never have heard of before or thought of before. Some of them, you know, like enunciation and talking about phrasing a song and, you know, uh, they, they would expect to have in there. But we also go into the packaging of, a singer, if they want to, you know, play the clubs or have a fan base or those type of things. We teach them their relationship to the stage. And uh, we try to give examples of using people that are out there in the world. So if we're talking about a particular skill, we try to think like Celine Dion. She may, you know, strike me as doing something in particular regarding uh, the particular skill that we are talking about. So we'd have a picture of her, and it's like, oh, I better understand what what they're talking about because, oh, yeah, I see that she does that. Now, i got a question for you. So, so since you brought up Celine Dion, um, I've never actually seen her live, uh, but oh, I've seen her have on. you have to. Have to <laughs> <laughs> but um, I d being from a, a teacher's as aspect of it, and since you kind of focus on the stage persona and the stage presence of the people that are up there, do you find yourself kind of just automatically kind of watching and studying people when you go to see them perform? All the, all the time. Matter of fact, there was a young man, his name was Michael Bolton, <laughs> and I really liked him, but he chose the wrong genre of music. And I tried really hard to find who represented him at the time. And he was just coming out, and I thought, oh, I just can't find it. I said, I really want to give him a hint as to what kind of music he should be going for to make, to be more congruent with who he is. Well, and then it was interesting, about a year and a half later, he changed his type of music, and it became exactly exactly like almost the rat pack type music you know the you know and uh i thought okay good but he doesn't have the performance skills i so i tried to contact him again and try to help them with that and then i saw that he obviously got performance skills taught to him but they weren't good he was like uh robotic and i thought oh here's a guy that i think can go all the way completely all the way if he just so that's the only time i ever chased someone and then I saw his performance a couple years later, and he'd settled very nicely into a nice set of performance skills and became very believable and connected with the audience. I still would love to share with him some things, you know. I haven't seen him around lately. I don't know. But there's an example. I don't usually chase people, but there's an example out there that somebody I really liked. I thought he had a lot going for him, but I just want to say, here, let me give you this. <laughs> give you this gift. <laughs> well, I've got a question for you. So when you watch somebody, um, can you kind of tell if it's something that is just a natural um, thing that they're doing or it's something that is that they taught and they're just kind of moving through the motions? Well, a good entertainer, an excellent entertainer, you won't be able to tell a difference. You know, if it's, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. or someone, you know, great like that. You know, we spoke about Celine Dion, you know, she has just a completely honest and believable relationship with her audience. You just know that she really is glad that that audience is there. That's such an important performance skill. Does she use certain performance skills that, like, for example, that I would say in the book? Yes, but a lot of that is just her really inner love for audience that comes up. She, she sings directly to her audience. She d sings for her audience, which is a separate, different thing, and 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 the audience members are convinced that they're f she's there for them. I mean, what better gift can an audience give back to an entertainer? True. Um, well, that kind of brings me to my next question for you. Um, 
audience psychology skills, and that's kind of one of the focal points of what you teach in trying to perfect that. But quite honestly, what is audience psychology? Audience psychology, I don't know that I've made it up or not. I, I've since found other people that use that term, although I don't know really what they mean. But for me, it's why an audience wants to keep watching you, wants to keep looking at you perform, they wants to keep buying your records or your CDs, uh, downloading your songs. They want to get their friends to come back and see you, you know. I used to use the example in, in, in a nightclub or in a Vegas showroom, if somebody's lighting a cigarette and they're not even to light their cigarette because they just don't want to take their eyes off the off the performer. Now if they were like ordering a drink, you know, that waitress is there and they're important to them, but they just they just don't want to lose a, a fraction of a second looking at that performer. That's the result of audience psychology. Uh, for example, here's an easy example that I use. If I were to look right at you, Jimmy, and look you right in your eyes, and I would say to you, Jimmy, I love, and then I would turn away and say you, you would not believe me. Now, you may not think about it, but unconsciously, that audience member or that audience section or the entire audience will feel abandoned because that singer took one phrase, it was a prepositional phrase, but it was one concept, little itty-bitty concept of a phrase, and then when when it was the meat to deliver it, it says, really, I really mean it, and you're the one that's important to me, they were abandoned. They were looked elsewhere. Now, that's just one performance skill that adds to the connectivity between the performer and the audience. It's one of the skills that I consider under the heading audience psychology. That is a very good example. Um, I kind of get the, I got the picture of it now in my head. Um, but okay. as far as, uh, you know, things being made up, um, I found something interesting in the book, a Ferrariism. Uh, which uh, you define as a word or phrase, real or made up, used by John Michael Ferrari and or Pepper J when coaching dynamic song performance skills. Yeah, I, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, it was funny. You know, John I, Michael I, I, Ferrari is my partner. I actually, uh, I was introduced to him when he was headlining and uh, in a resort. And I thought, this young man... Turns out he was older than I am, but who knew? Uh, he's very talented. He's got a great voice. He loves doing what he is doing. He's got personality, but he really doesn't have performance skills. <laughs> so I told him, I said, you know, I can give you skills that will make your career really take off, you know. And then so I ended up teaching him and managing him. And his career did take off, and he was touring all over the country, and he was really pleased and happy. And several years after that, I'd say about eight or nine years after that, when he decided he didn't want to tour anymore, he started teaching with me. And uh, when I was teaching him, he would come up with these strange phrases that I would start stealing from him and incorporating into my teaching. <laughs> so that's where they came from. Well, I thought it was a, an entertaining part of the book when I was um, going through it, um, that uh, kind of a... Um, it shows that a personality involved with doing the teaching as opposed to being a, a rigid kind of structural thing that you guys have a little bit of fun with it as well. So that's kind of why I, I brought that up. Um, you also have a bunch of exercises in the book that anybody who is in the perform doing these performances can uh, utilize as far as um, their performance exercises. Um, a couple of them, though, are kind of uh, things that I, I personally wouldn't have thought of as something to do, like the thought exercise that is on page 70. Um, that is something that I wouldn't have actually ever thought of, I'm not trying to be punny about it. Um, but uh, so the thought exercise, how did that come about as far as a, as a teaching tool? Well, I've been using that for singers and actors for a long time. I believe that the body reacts faster than the mouth in speaking. And in, in, when you're acting, the whole purpose of acting is to make it look real. And I believe that the true communication of a song is not like 
to sing it like everybody else, unless, of course, you're an impersonator or something like that. It's to make your song your own. So if you have a thought about what you're going to say before you say it, then the audience sees that. You're giving more to the audience than just the lyrics. You're actually leading the audience into something where even if they're not quite sure what's coming, they get the sense of it. I think it makes it more believable. And 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 the thought that you give beforehand determines the, the weight of the song. I mean, you could have very depressed thought, thoughts <laughs> or you could have happy thoughts, you know, um, and they're all going to affect the audience differently. So one person in mind when uh, you were talking about that, um, I don't know why, but it, it popped into my head, but Eddie Murphy, um, when he did his uh, comedy stage routine, when he would actually walk out on the stage, you can kind of, he had a particular walk of confidence to him. Um, yes. When, do you think, because like I said, you've had experience with this and you're kind of a teacher of it. Um, do you see that as when you watch, did you ever see the, him uh, do his routine before? Only on like YouTube or something. And I will tell you, that he owns his stage you know we teach that and that's very important for singers for actors but extraordinarily important for comics because when they're out there 99.9% .9 of the time they're by themselves so if they don't own their stage whether it's by you know not leaning or you know by the use of the stage you know by feeling the confidence of walking out and, and knowing that that belongs to you and you belong there, uh, that can be very detrimental to a comic uh, because people start feeling uncomfortable. And they start noticing consciously or unconsciously their lack of ownership of the stage, and that's where you lose an audience, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, all of this is, in, of course, in the book. Dynamic Song Performance, the Singer's Bible. Um, if you are interested in hiring Pepper J to kind of, if you after you've read the book and looked at it and saw see everything that's in there, if you are interested in just helping or furthering along your career, um, I do know a lot of uh, voice actors and writers and just uh, some actors, but mainly a lot of musicians that listen to my show. And so this would kind of, I think all of this is helpful because I think, you know, that has always been my biggest thing is when you're up there on stage, it doesn't matter what level you are in, in your career at that point or how many people are actually out there in the audience that you are to give 100% uh, to your performance. And, you know, because even if it's only like 10 people and not the thousand people that you expected, you still want to entertain and give your uh, a whole full uh, performance to those 10 people. So that Each they, and every time, absolutely. And some of our clients, well, many of our clients over the years have been musicians or bands. And we explain how performance skills of the guitarist and the saxophonist and, 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 and blending that with the other members of the band and what to do when one particular uh, instrument is, is soloing and different things. So uh, that can really help a band's uh, success is to have performance skills not only individually but as a group. And uh, some of the ones that uh, come to mind, uh, uh, there's a group called Hemlock. Um, I've interviewed them a couple of times. I do like their music. It's a little bit of a, in on, on the harder edge genres. Um, but their stage presence is phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's very well oiled performance. Um, the two guitarists that flank the singer bassist um, are, they're just kind of in sync with everything and they kind of, it, the, how they interact on the stage. Um, I know uh, Riggs, who used to be Rob Zombie's former guitarist, um, when he was in Rob Zombie's band, the performance that they did on the stage behind Rob Zombie while he was singing, um, him and uh, Blasco, who was the bassist, I mean, it's, and it's that kind of level um, that I think that all musicians should strive to get to, um, but that's me personally. I mean, so I'm kind of a hard ass about stuff like that <laughs> you know if you're going to go up there and perform you got to give it all and all of that stuff so 
Um, right, but, and most musicians don't really know. You know, I worked with, actually, what was the Nikki Nova's group, uh, Liquid Blue. They're the they perform more in the United States than any other band, I believe, and it, it was really important to them to up their performance skills and they've been giving it their all by like being loud or being this that and the other but when we gay john and i worked with them it was like they, they just felt more comfortable more interactive and the audience really appreciates that you're right so and this is all the stuff that you guys teach and so if anybody's listening who would like to get a hold of pepper j or john michael ferrari they can be reached at www.dynamicperformances.com, all one word, and there is an S on the back of the performance. So it's dynamicperformances.com. And also your book is out. Um, what if someone would, uh, hopefully everybody's interested in picking up the book now, um, where would they be the best place for them to go and find your book? It is on Amazon, Dynamic Song Performance, The Singer's Bible, and soon it will be in bookstores everywhere. And frankly, I'm having a little bit of problem in the change of format, <laughs> but I hopefully in a couple of weeks it will be in all the bookstores. Um, yeah, it's Amazon. Check it out. And Dynamic Song Performance, without an S, has its own Facebook page now. Awesome. Well, I do appreciate you coming on the air and speaking with me. I can talk to you for hours, but it's already been like 40 minutes, believe it or not. So, um, but I do enjoy our conversation and I look forward to, hopefully I can have you on the show again and talk to you again a little bit more. Um, and ho after I stop recording, I'm going to see if I can get a little critique of my performance. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, thank you so much. You're always a pleasure to chat with, and I look forward to having you as a guest on one of our shows also. Awesome. Oh, and uh, so in, in those shows, actually, um, the uh, Actors Radio. Um, just out of curiosity, what is Actors Radio? Actors Radio, Actors Reporter, Actors Entertainment are now online only, and they are three channels on the Actors Podcast Network. Actors Radio has uh, information, has a lot of interviews behind the scenes of directors. It has a Will Roberts show. He's He interviews like people outside of entertainment. It's, it's pretty fun, but things that... Uh, and then we link out to a bunch of radio stations that are very cool and that are working with us. Actors Reporter is the online newspaper. We put entertainment news all in one place, plus the interviews and the shows that are on at Actors Entertainment. is a 15 entertainment shows, including the live chat show, Actors E-Chat. That's the show I've invited you to be on. <laughs> I just have to get down to Pahrumpf, Nevada to do it. So. Yeah, I'd love it. On IMDb, Internet Movie Database, check us out at Actors Entertainment. Perfect. All right. Well, I do appreciate you coming on. I wish you much success with your book and anything that comes up. I, mean, I am following all of your stuff now on Facebook. So every time you post something, I will be reposting it in the Erosion Factory radio show news feed so that everybody can uh, go and check it out. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks so much. I, I always appreciate you. No problem. You have a good day. You too, Jimmy. Talk soon.